The next question. Adil Bareli, Uttar Pradesh, India. Is every hadith in Bukhari authentic? If yes, then can it be compared to the Quran? A similar question is asked by Shadab Khatri, London, UK. Are all the hadith in Siyasitta Sahih? A similar question by Suleiman Khan, Birmingham, UK. What are the criteria that make a hadith Sahih? Are all the Sahih hadith of the same level? Why is Sahih Bukhari so special? So the three questions have clubbed together talking about Sahih Bukhari and the criteria that make hadith Sahih and what makes Bukhari special. Regarding the first question that are all the hadith in Sahih Bukhari authentic and can it be compared to the Quran? Yes, all the hadith in Sahih Bukhari authentic. There are 7,563 hadith in Sahih Bukhari and all of them authentic. Can it be compared to the Quran? The Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran is verbatim the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was revealed to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to Archangel Gabriel. Then the scribes, the sahabas, they wrote down and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa checked it up personally. He asked them to recite it. He checked it. If there was a mistake, he corrected it. And Prophet, peace be upon him, used to rehearse it with Archangel Gabriel every Ramadan. And the last Ramadan before he died, he rehearsed it twice. So that means the Quran is 100% the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verbatim revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet dictated to the Saba, they wrote it down, he counter-checked it. He revived it with Archangel Gabriel. So Quran is verbatim, word to word, without a difference even of a letter. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As far as say Bukhari is concerned, it is the most authentic book amongst all the books of Hadith, the highest level. But the Hadith are the sayings of the Prophet and his actions. Some Hadith are verbatim words. But the others are meaning-wise. They are not verbatim, the word of the Prophet. And they were heard by the Sahabas. Sahabas memorized it. Then the Tabain, Tabai Tabain, and the chain of narrators. So it is not of that. The Quran is the highest level. It is the verbatim word of God. The Hadith are the sayings of the Prophet. If it is a Sahih Hadith, we believe in it. We have to follow it. But natural Quran is number one. Then comes the Sahih Hadith. In Sahih Hadith, the highest is Sahih Bukhari and it's ijma amongst the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'at scholars, among the Sunni scholars that after the book of Allah, after the Quran, the next in authenticity, the next to be followed is Sahih Bukhari. There's no doubt about it. The second most important book of Islam, it is Sahih Bukhari. Come to the second question. Are all the hadith in Siyasat authentic? Siyasatta is actually a misnomer. Siyasatta means six sahih. It should be Qutubu Sitta. It is six books of hadith. So Qutubu Sitta is the right terminology for six books of hadith. Siyasatta is a misnomer. Siyasatta means six authentic books. The right terminology is Qutubu Sitta. Six books of hadith. And this Qutubu Sitta are the Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunan Abu Dawud, Sunan Tirmidhi, Sunan Nisai, and Ibn Majah. These six books, the scholars they say that if you read these six books of Hadith, you will come to know most of the rulings in Islam. But the Hadith in all the six books are not 100% authentic. The only books in which all the Hadith are authentic and say, are Sahih Bukhari number one, then is Sahih Muslim. The remaining four books, Sunan Abu Dawud, Sunan Tirmidhi, Sunan Nisai, and Ibn Majah, in these four books, most of the hadith is a sahih, but not all 100%. So these six books, the scholars say, if you read and you read the Quran, you will come to know most of the rulings in Islam, most of it, not 100%, but most of it. There's a small group of scholars who say that instead of Ibn Majah, there should be Imam Mu'at Tamalik. So there's another small group of scholars who say the six books should contain 
besides Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunnah Abu Dawood, Sunnah Nisai, Sunnah Tirmidhi, it should contain Imam Mu'atta Malik instead of Ibn Majah. Just a small group. But we agree that six books are there. If you want to join Imam Mu'atta Malik, it becomes seven. But most of the scholars say that Ibn Majah is included in this. So all the hadith of these six books, only the first two, Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari, all authentic. The remaining four, majority authentic, but not all. There is a great scholar of the recent time, a muhaddis, that is Sheikh Nasruddin al-Bani. What he did, he has divided the last four books of Qutb al-Sitta into Sahih and Zaif. He wrote this is Sahih and he differentiated the books of Hadith, the last four books, Sunan Abu Dawud, Asai Sunan Abu Dawud, Zaif Sunan Abu Dawud. Then he took the next book, Sunan Nisai, Sai Sunan Nisai, Zaif Sunan Nisai. Then he took the next book, Sunan Tirmidhi, Sai Sunan Tirmidhi, Zaif Sunan Tirmidhi. Then he took the last book, Ibn Majah, Sai Ibn Majah, Zaif Ibn Majah. So the Silsila is Sahih. So if you read this Silsila is Sahih of Sheikh Nasr al Albani, then you can come to know all the Sahih Hadith in the last four books of Qutb al Sitta. He's done a great work. So this is how you can differentiate. Come to the third question, that what are the criteria for Hadith to be Sahih and what is so special about Sahih Bukhari and what are the categorizations of Hadith. As far as classification and categorization of Hadith is concerned, it is called as Mustala Hadith, that is the science of Hadith. The Muhaddisins have classified Hadith into very different categories. The three more important classifications, I'll tell you, there are many classifications. One is based on who is the original narrator. And according to Ibn Salah, he has classified the hadith into who is the original narrator. And number one, the highest, hadith Qudsi. It goes up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it says that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it goes up to Allah. It starts with the narrator, goes to the Sahaba, goes to the Prophet, and Prophet said, Allah said, that becomes Hadith Kutti, the highest category. Number two is the Marfu Hadith. The Hadith which reaches, Marfu means raised. It reaches to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A chain of narrators are there, then it says the Sahaba name, says that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So that becomes Marfu. The third category is Mawkuf, means stop. It goes to the level of the Sahaba. So if the Hadith goes to the level of Sahaba but doesn't reach the level of Prophet Muhammad it is called as Mawkuf. That is stopped. That is the third level. The fourth is the Maktu, means cut off. It reaches to the Tabain. So if it reaches to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's called Hadith Qudsi. Reaches to the Prophet, it's called as Marfu Hadith. Reaches to the Sahaba, it is called as Mawkuf. If it reaches to the Tabain, that is the next generation after the Saba, it is called as Maktu. So this classification is based on who is the original narrator. One type of classification. The second type of classification, according to Ibn Salah, is based on the number of chain of narrators. And it is divided into two types. The Mutawatir Hadith and the Ahad Hadith. In the Mutawatir Hadith, there are umpteen, there are several number of narrators. The number is not specified. It says several at every stage. And this Mutawatir Hadith is divided into two further. Mutawatir in terms of wordings. Mutawatir in terms of meaning. I'll give you an example of Mutawatir in terms of wording. That means all the Hadith that you find, the wordings are exactly the same. And Mutawatir means at every stage, there are various narrators. Like at the Sahaba level, there are various Sahabas who narrated it. Then there are various other people who narrated from the Sahaba. And the next level and the third level. One example is a very famous Mutawatir Hadith, which is a Hadith Mutawatir in words. That our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that anyone who deliberately or purposefully tells a lie in my name, he prepares his seat in the hellfire. Now this hadith, the words are same, but natural Arabic, this is the English translation which may differ, 
But in Arabic, the words are the same. It was narrated by no less than 74 sahabas. 74 different sahabas narrated this hadith that they said that they heard the Prophet say this. 74. Now, in the next level, you have much more than 74 people who have narrated it. Each sahaba may have narrated it to many other people. So, in the second level, you have more than 100 of narrators. Then third level, you have another few hundred narrators. So overall, there are hundreds of people who have narrated this hadith. And all those who have narrated, the words are exactly the same. So the scholars of hadith, they say, it cannot be possible that hundreds of people are narrating exactly the same words. It has to be correct. There is no difference of opinion that these are verbatim the words of the beloved Prophet ﷺ. So many narrators at every level. That means the minimum narrators of this hadith are 74. Next level there are more than 74. Third level more than that. So minimum. So if there are several narrators at each level, then the hadith is called mutawatir. If the words are same, it's called mutawatir in words. Let's come to the second example. Mutawatir in meaning. The hadith of the Prophet Muhammad when he said that for Fajr Salah there are two rakat, there are four rakat for the Zohar Salah, Asar Salah, Nisha Salah, and for Maghrib Salah there are three rakat. There are various narrators at each level, umpteen number of narrators. Many Sahabas who narrated it, followed by Sahabai, but the words kept on differing. But the meaning was the same. Though the words differed, the meaning was the same, that in Fajr there were two rakat, in Zohar, Asar and Isha there were four rakat to be prayed, and in Maghrib three rakat. So here the Muhaddisin say it is mutawatir in meaning. Meaning is the same, the words may differ. So this was the type of mutawatir hadith, two types. In the Ahad hadith, it is further divided into three types of hadith. One is Mashur, second is Aziz, and third is Gharib. Now, all the Ahad Hadith, they do not meet the criteria of Mutawatir. The highest level of Ahad Hadith is the Mashur, that minimum three or more narrators have narrated at each level. That means minimum number of narrators each level, if there are three, then it is called as a Mashur Hadith. That means that minimum three Sahabas have narrated it. Then the Tabain may be more than three, but if minimum three is there at each level, it is called as Mashur Hadith or even more than three. It can be four also, yet it's called a Mashur Hadith. If it is several, then it becomes a Mutawatir. But if it's three at each level or four at each level, it is called as a Mashur Hadith. It is the highest in terms of Ahad Hadith. The second level in Ahad Hadith is the Aziz Hadith. In Aziz Hadith, there are minimum two narrators at each level. There's the chain of narrators. And minimum two Sabahs have narrated it and at the other levels also two or more have continued with the chain. So that's called Aziz Hadith. The third category of Aziz Hadith is the Garib. That means at any one stage only one person. Other stages there may be 10, 20, no problem. And the best example is the Hadith of Bukhari which was narrated by the Umar may Allah be pleased with him. The first Hadith of Sai Bukhari, volume number one, book number one, Hadith number one. That our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, Innamal amalu binniya. That your actions are based on your intention. All the hadith, there are hundreds of hadith, all hadith that are there, it goes to Hazrat Umar may Allah be peace with him. Says, Umar may Allah be peace with him, said that the Prophet said. Below, after Hazrat Umar may Allah be peace with him, there are many narrators. But at one stage, there is only one narrator. No other Sahaba besides Hazrat Umar narrated this, so this becomes Ahad, a Gharib Hadith. It's a Sai Hadith, it is there in Bukhari, it's a Sai Hadith, but it is Ahad Hadith and a Gharib Hadith. All the chains reach to Hazrat Umar, may Allah peace with him. There is no other Sahaba who narrated this. So this is called as Ahad Gharib Hadith. Ahad and Gharib Hadith. So this was the second type of classification based on number of narrators. There are various classifications. I'll just come to the main one which we are discussing. The third type of classification of hadith is based on authenticity. In this type of classification, there are two types of hadith. One is maqbul, accepted, and the other is mardud, which is rejected. 
in the accepted type of hadith, there are two types of hadith. Sahi hadith and Hassan. In the Sahi hadith, what are the criteria for Sahi hadith? There are basically five criteria for a hadith to be Sahi. Number one, the narrator should be of good character. That means he should be honest, he should be truthful, he should not lie, he should not cheat, he should be of good character. That is the first criteria. Number two, he should be of very good memory so that he can repeat what he has heard of the Prophet. Or according to Ibn Salah, it can also be that what he heard from the Prophet, he remembers it and he writes it down and then if required, he can again read it. Even that's accepted. The second category is the memory should be very good. He can repeat it at any time or at least remember it till the time he writes it. The third criteria for Hadith to be Sahih is that there should be a continuous chain of narrators. There should be consistency. I cannot say that I heard from my great-grandfather. If my great-grandfather died before I was born, how can I say I heard from my great-grandfather? So, there should be a continuous chain of narrators. All the narrators should have met each other and personally heard from them. The fourth criteria is that there should not be any flaw. I'll give you an example of a flaw that two contemporary narrators who lived at the same time, if one chain of narrators says that narrator A heard from narrator B, and according to the Rijal, the history, we know that these two narrators, though they lived at the same time, but they never met. So how can narrator A heard the hadith from narrator B when they did not meet? So this is a flaw. So there should not be any flaw. And the fifth criteria for hadith to be say is that it should not contradict with any other sound hadith. Any other hadith which is sound, which is sahih, if it contradicts, then it is wrong. So it should not contradict with any other sound hadith, any other sahih hadith or hasan hadith. So there are basically five criteria for hadith to be sahih. Number one, the narrator should be of a good character. Number two, of good memory. Number three, there should be continuity in the chain of narrator. The sanat should be there. Number four, there should not be irregularities or flaws. Number five, it should not contradict any other sound hadith. If all these five criteria are met, it is called a sahih hadith. If there is a slight flaw in any of these, then the hadith becomes hasan, but it is accepted. It is Makbul. In the Sahih Hadith, there are two types of Hadith. That is the Sahih Hadith with continuous chain and Sahih Hadith with a broken chain. In the Hassan again, there are two types. Hassan Hadith with a continuous chain and Hassan Hadith with a broken chain. So these are the categories of the Makbul Hadith, accepted Hadith. If it falls under Sahih or Hassan, it is accepted as a Hujjah, as an argument for you to accept it. If it's a Sahih Hadith or Hassan Hadith and if the Prophet has prohibited, it becomes haram for you. If the Prophet has commanded you, it becomes compulsory for you or it becomes mustab for you. The second category is Hadith which are Zaif or Mawdu. Zaif has again got various categories. Zaif, Zaif, Jiddan, Zaif because of the chain of narrator, Zaif because of inconsistency in the narrator. Various, there are multiple different types of Zaif Hadith. Time will not permit to go into detail. Same with Maudu, there are different types. So basically, the third type of classification based on authenticity, and there are other classifications also, makes a Hadith which is Magbud, Hadith which is Mardud, which is rejected. Now, the question also asks one more question. That are all the Sai Hadith of same category? That means all the hadith which are magbul, are they of same category? No. There are levels. And I remember when one of my first teachers of hadith, that is Sheikh Ziyaraman Azmi, may Allah grant him Jannah, he was the head and the dean of the department of hadith in the Islamic University of Medina. And he expired just a few months back on the day of Arafah, on the 30th of July, just three months back. And may Allah grant him Jannah Firdos. He was my first teacher in Hadith. And he said that there are 10 categories, levels of Makbul Hadith. Eight categories of Sahih and two of Hassan. Imam Bukhari, in his Jame Sahih, 
he put additional criteria for making hadith sahih. Besides the five criteria which I discussed, Imam Bukhari put his additional criteria which are stricter. Then only said I will include in my jami sahih. I'll give you an example. Normally for hadith to be sahih, the narrator should be of a minimum level of category 5. The Muhaddisin, they have written the history and biography of all the narrators and they have given 12 levels to the narrators. Number one is Sikka. All the Sahabas come in the Sikka means the best. Number one, truthful. Then one, two, three, four, last is Khazab, liar. So if the narrator is up to level five, it can be counted as Hadith which is Sahih. Imam Bukhari, he says, in my Silsila Sahih, in my Sahih Bukhari, I will only take narrators up to level 3. That means he is putting a stricter condition. So if Bukhari put additional criteria to make it more authentic, if it's a Hadith in Sahih Bukhari, it's a high level. Imam Muslim, who was a student of Imam Bukhari, he put few additional criteria of his own. He said, I will take narrators only up to level 4. 4 and above. Bukhari said 3 and above, 1, 2, 3. Muslim said I will take up to level 4, I will not take level 5. His additional criteria. So, the Muhaddisin they say that number one, the highest hadith is that hadith which is muttafiq alayhi. That means the hadith which was compiled by Bukhari and he said it is sahih in his Sahih Bukhari and the hadith which were compiled by Imam Muslim in his Sahih Muslim and it occurs in both of them. So if it occurs in Sahih Bukhari and in Sahih Muslim, it is called as Muttafiq Alay. That means it is available in both Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And there is a book Lulu al Marjan that has collection of all the hadith which occurs in both Bukhari and Muslim. So that is number one. The hadith that is present in both Bukhari and Muslim that is the highest level number one. Number two is the hadith which are present in Sahih Bukhari. Number three are the hadith which are present in Sahih Muslim. Number four, the Muhaddisin they say that Imam Bukhari was not able to analyze all the hadith. The Muhaddisin say that approximately today there are approximately one million hadith. And Bukhari memorized approximately 6 lakh hadith, 600,000 hadith. So the Muhaddisin say that those hadith which Imam Bukhari did not analyze, we are analyzing and applying the criteria of Bukhari. Then the Muhaddisin they say that those hadith which Imam Muslim did not analyze, we are applying the criteria of Imam Muslim on those hadith which Imam Muslim did not analyze and we are telling this fulfill this criteria. So number four is the hadith which Imam Bukhari did not analyze, the other Muhaddisin analyzed and which Imam Muslim did not analyze and the other Muhaddisin applied the criteria of Imam Muslim and analyzed and it's matching both the criteria of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim but these Imam did not analyze themselves that is number four. Number five is those hadith which Imam Bukhari did not analyze but fulfill the criteria of Imam Bukhari that comes to number five. Number six is those hadith which Imam Muslim did not analyze but fulfill the criteria of Imam Muslim analyzed by the other Muhaddisin that comes at level six. In Imam Bukhari as I mentioned there are 7,563 hadith even in Sahih Muslim there are 7,563 hadith. The numbering differs in different editions. So this is level 6. Level 7 is a Sahih Hadith with continuous chain which doesn't fulfill the criteria of Bukhari and Muslim which fulfills the normal criteria of Sahih Hadith which I discussed. Five criteria of Sahih Hadith but it is a continuous chain. Number 8 is a Sahih Hadith fulfilling the five criteria of Sahih Hadith but it is a broken chain. Number 9 is Hassan Hadith, a little bit doesn't fulfill, 100% of Sahih but very close to it with a continuous chain that is number 9, Hassan Hadith with a continuous chain. And the 10th category is Hassan Hadith with a broken chain. So these are the 10 
categories of Sahih Hadith. This science of Hadith, it is very vast. And believe me, if you compare to how the historians approve any historical fact and they say, okay, this is historically correct. There is a criteria which normal non-Muslim historians, when they agree that this is a historical fact. But the criteria put by the Muhaddisin for a Hadith to be say is multiple times stricter. It is multiple times more difficult. It is multiple times more stringent as what the historians do. That's the reason if for a Hadith to be Sahih, I just told you the brief of it. It's not that easy. Every narrator, his history has been written. There's a Rijal, all in detail. It is so difficult. It is such a minute study that if the Muhaddisin, when they give a verdict, there can be a minor difference. There cannot be someone saying it's a very high category, someone saying Sahi, the other saying Maudu, it's not possible. It may differ level 1 Hadith or level 2, one or two level may differ, that's it. If authentic, good Muhaddisin, they refer and they check. So this is the science of Hadith. It is not possible for a layman or a person like me, who's just a student of knowledge, I cannot decipher whether say say or life. I have read about the criteria, but I am not qualified at all. So this to classify whether the hadith is sahi or zaif or maudu or which level of sahih, it is the work of a muhaddith specialization. And in the recent time, one of the famous muhaddith, as I mentioned, was Sheikh Nasruddin Albani. And he has done a great job, Sheikh Nasruddin Albani. And the question which when I studied with Sheikh Ziyar Rahman Azmi, may Allah grant him Jannah, that when we talk about Quran and Sahih Hadith, we don't have all the Sahih Hadith compiled. The maximum I could do, I studied with him in the year 1997. We could say, okay, take Sil Sahih, but that doesn't have all the Sahih Hadith. It contains the Sahih Hadith in Qutb Sitta only. Bukhari Muslim and the other four books. So Alhamdulillah, after Sheikh Zia Rahman asked me, he retired. There are many scholars in the last 1400 years who tried to compile all the Sahih Hadith together in one volume, but all those who tried, they never completed the project. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Zia Rahman asked me, after he retired, he took about 17 to 18 years to complete this project and he compiled all the Sahih Hadith together and he compiled in a book called as Jame Kamil. Al Hadith as Sahih as Shamil. The full name is Al Jame Al Kamil Al Hadith as Sahih as Shamil. Short form it's called Al Jame Kamil. And about four years ago, he compiled it and the first edition was published. And after it was published, the revision was done about two years before and it was printed just in this year. And Alhamdulillah, after the second edition was printed and published and Sheikh Ziyar Rahman Azmi, he checked it up and he was happy that at least the revised edition was out. Though he wrote the manuscript in 20 volumes, it was printed the first edition in 12 volumes. The second edition, because the print was larger, it came in 18 volumes. He also made a Muqtasar Jame Kamil in five volumes. In the original Jame Kamil, as Sheikh Ziyar Rahman Azmi said, there were more than a million hadith. Out of the million hadith, there are many duplicates. Like in Sahih Bukhari, if you remove the duplicates, there are 2,220 hadith. So if you compile all the 1 million hadith and remove the duplicates, according to Sheikh Zeram and Azmin, there were about 60,000 hadith. From the 60,000 hadith, he collected only the Sahih hadith, removing the duplicates. And in his Jame Kamil, there are 16,546 hadith. So according to Sheikh Ziyarim and Azmin, after removing the duplicates, the Sahih Hadith today in the world are 16,546. And we can safely say, if not 100%, at least this compilation of his, at least minimum, contains 95% of the Sahih Hadith. In this compilation, he has given the Hujja, he has his own criteria, he compiled all the Hadith which are Sahih and removed the duplicates. He gave a reason that if this hadith was sahih, and according to him it was zaif, he even mentioned that outside his Jame Kamil. 
So there are additional 3,000 hadith which other scholars say it is sahih but he says it is zaif and he gives hujja why it is zaif and he mentions it so that people don't think he has forgotten. Then he has even added in that 3,000 hadith the very common hadith, famous hadith but they are zaif. Famous hadith which are maudu, for example the very common and famous hadith that ikhtilaf is arhama, it is a maudu hadith. There is another maudu hadith that as far as you go to acquire knowledge, no problem, even if you go to China, China was never the seat of knowledge at the time of the Prophet, the hadith is maudu. So he mentioned this famous hadith, but it did not say hadith, it is a maudu and giving his reason. So total is Jame Kamil contained 16,546 hadith plus approximately 3,000 hadith which other Muaddisin has said say and he says it is zaif or the other famous hadith which are zaif and maudu so people don't think he has missed out and in this the big volume which is printed 12 volumes in the first edition 18 in the second edition this has given the takhri the details why it is say why it is zaif and all the reasoning and if the hadith is there he gives the references there in say Bukhari Hadith number so and so, including say Muslim hadith number so and so, including Abu Dawud hadith number so and so. So after the end of every hadith, has, it is available in three books of hadith, or available in five books of hadith, or two books of hadith, or only one book of hadith. The details are given so that you come to know from where it comes. In the Muqtasar, Jame Kamil, which is in five volumes, the takhrij, the research has been removed so that it's easy for a layman to read. So the complete Jami Kamil is mainly for scholars and for the Muhaddisin. For a layman, the Muqtasar is sufficient. The Muqtasar, we have started translating it into English. It was a three years project. We started it about four years back. But unfortunately, when the translation was complete, I wasn't happy with the English language. So we are revising it. So now we have completed one third of the revision. Inshallah, next year, by the end of next year, it will be out. So we will inshallah translate the muqtasar which is in five volumes and it will be easy for people who don't know arabic to read it and to understand it we are translating also into urdu and other languages we pray to allah subhanahu that this work is a phenomenal work so when we say quran and say hadith now you can say quran and jami kamil jami kamil contains all the hadith of bukhari all the hadith of muslim all the say hadith which is there in the qutub sitta in Abu Dawood, in Sunan Nisai, in uh, Sunan Tirmidhi, in Ibn Majah, Muatta Malik. There are other books of Sahih. The other books of Sahih that we know that Bukhari and Muslim are only two books which are 100% authentic. And scholars even say that Imam Muatta Malik, all Sahih. So for a layman, if he wants to know, he cannot do research. If that is a Bukhari or Muslim, or Imam Muatta Malik safely can say the hadith is sahih. Otherwise, he has to check whether it is sahih or not. There were other books of hadith compiled by scholars saying it's completely sahih, but the scholars don't agree everything is sahih. After Bukhari and Muslim, there is a compilation of Sayyid ibn Khuzayma. According to Suyuti, Sayyid ibn Khuzayma, after Bukhari Muslim, there are some hadiths which scholars say is not sahih but it comes in the third level. The fourth is Sayyid ibn Habban. Then there is the fifth book. It's Mustadak al-Hakim. He also claims everything is Sahih, but the scholars differ and they say that everything is not Sahih. So these three books compiled as everything is Sahih. Most of them, almost all are Sahih, but not everything. In the other Qutub al-Sitta, the four books, when Imam Dawood, when he compiled, his main objective wasn't to compile only Sahih Hadith. His objective was to compile Hadith which solves matter of Salah or of Wudu or of other aspects. Same with the other Muaddithin, Imam Nasai, Imam Tirmidhi or Imam Ibn Majah. Their purpose wasn't to compile Sahih. Majority are Sahih. So that's the reason they themselves mentioned in the collection that this Hadith is Sahih. They have done that. But for a layman, for him to know hadith is sahih, if it's a hadith of Bukhari or a Muslim, it is safe to call it sahih. Or if it's a hadith which is there in Imam Muatta Malik, it is safe to be sahih. Any other hadith, he has to go and check up what have the muhaddisin said and then he can decipher whether it is sahih or not. 
this was in brief what I've mentioned, it is just scratching the surface. It is just scratching the surface on the science of Hadith. It's a huge science. Because of this, we know today, Alhamdulillah, all the minute details of the last and final messenger, our beloved Prophet Muhammad There is no human being on the face of the earth whose life has been preserved with so minute detail. It is all because of the Hadith that we have. And when Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 9, that we have revealed the Quran and we shall guide from corruption. The word here used is zikr. It surely means the Quran. And many of the Muhaddis and scholars say it also includes the Sahih Hadith. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Quran, we have given the zikr and also the Sahih Hadith. And he will see to it that he protects it.